Back here again. I'm sitting here on my first owned MR2, and uh, we're gonna get tearing on the interior on this guy. A, uh, I've already gotten a number of uh, body parts torn off of this, um, almost to the point where it's becoming a little bit clutter in the, uh, in the garage here. Um, we can start mounting some of them on the other chassis, but I think we might hold off on that for a future episode. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's strip some more of this green guy down and see what we can find. Uh, this was my first MR2, like I was saying. Um, lots of weird stuff wrong with it. Uh, you know, mainly on the interior panels, all sorts of weird lifting and, and uh, usual 90s stuff. But uh, man, I'll tell you, one of the things that I really am bummed out that the, uh, the other shell is a, is a hard top, which is so much better for racing. Um, but uh, man, the T-tops are one of the reasons that drew me to this, uh, these here vehicles. Um, this one also came with the uh, Gen 3, uh, 3 SGT already swapped into it too. It's, a, it's still an SW21 chassis, so it's a NA chassis. But uh, it's a, uh, it had some cool stuff along with it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this guy too. I'll get a close up of this guy, uh, of, the, uh, of the Blitz Boost Controller here too, the dual solenoid Blitz uh, Boost Controller. Uh, kind of cool stuff, you know, just old school old school random stuff too. It also came with a humongous kind of, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It was like a, uh, the, the crystal gear shift knobs that everybody used to do back in the 90s too that looked like a humongous dildo. Um, but we got rid of that one. That one was one of the first ones to go. It, uh, it cracked and we actually used the, uh, the threading here for, for, this, uh, for this here ball shifter. And uh, it actually worked pretty good when, uh, when she was running this uh when i got this one it, it didn't have uh fifth gear in it either so uh we knew we were going to take it all apart no matter what but uh um let's take some more of this interior apart it, it won't be the first time it's uh it's come apart so i think most of it's just gonna fly right apart here so <laughs> seats out it was just uh, four 14s um, a couple that are facing towards the dash here and then a couple that are sticking up right here I always recommend uh, leaving the front ones threaded in just a tiny bit um, so you can uh, still uh, move the seat back and forth you can still move the latch mechanism because uh, once you unbolt the front ones it seems like the uh, rails they just want to slide wherever they want to slide um, so that's always a good idea too, so you can get a little bit of access to the front ones. And then from there you can just unthread the front ones with your, uh, with your fingers. So even though it wasn't part of our initial plan, we're going to go ahead and remove this door right now. I went ahead and got ahead of myself and uh, just started removing it. Uh, one mistake that I made though too was, dis was not disconnecting the but uh, the door harness from the uh, from the body there. So let's go ahead and take care of that I bought these guys back in with a uh, with a couple threads here So sometimes interior work can become a little bit time-consuming, but we don't mind Do we? It's always time-lapse opportunities <laughs> I Don't do too many time lapses though too. They seem seem kind of played out really Let's see here This one is Weirdly hidden. I don't remember taking this uh, door panel apart, but I did have to. I swear I had to uh, do a uh, window motor in each one of these doors here. All right. Let's see here. 
here. Got you. Got you. You got a connector back here. Yes, we do. door panels off. I ended up identifying the uh, the two door harness uh, plugs here. Uh, they're just right over here in this uh, junction block. Uh, I figured that they're gonna be inside the door panel here because uh, uh, that's where I usually find them on uh, on the good old Scooby-Doo's but uh, anyways let's see if these guys pull through. to go try and remove it one more time and uh, the uh, check strap was uh, was still on there too I'm not sure if I actually even removed that guy the uh, the correct way but uh, we're free and uh, let's get this guy pulled off here it's door is actually incredibly a lot heavier than I thought it would be I'll get one of the uh, one of the dollies here to move the rest of it. But we're free, yay! So just moving ourselves around just a little bit more, uh, we're going to uh, attack this next little center console area and uh, start pulling up all the shift lever and everything like that, and then just move right on over to the dash. Like I was saying, I think a lot of you guys will know my uh, my woes here. There's a there's hardly a matching bolt left on this here, uh, here body. This one happens to be a, I think this is a masonry screw of the uh, flathead variety. So you're gonna employ just about damn near every tool you own on each one of these excursions. Um, chipped away on some of this lining here too. Uh, Oddly enough, there was quite the uh, collection of Wendy's and other debris inside of this guy when I got it, and it, uh, oh wow, this is a flathead on the other side too. Uh, uh, there's some worms living somewhere in there. They're all dead, but they had a little, little pad made for themselves in there, a little, little worm pad. Um, yeah, so we didn't, we didn't want that. I scraped all that a little worm life away. Sorry, worms. You don't get to ride with me too fast for warms. I really have enjoyed working on this uh, this old car for you guys. Old Japanese cars are my thing. And this one uh, kind of rebridled my uh, my passion with old Japanese cars. All right, so that guy's off. Nice and removed there. It's not in the worst condition that I've seen around on some of these guys too. Like I said too, selling these parts for really cheap too. So if you guys need anything, and you be sure and hit me up, you know, these these are definitely not in perfect condition or anything like that too, but they might be a little bit better than what you have and uh, feel free to hit me up. All right, so let's uh, let's pop off the, uh, the good old shift lever here. And uh, yeah, I think that that will expose enough of the uh, things that we need to get to uh, to uh, take out the uh, dash here. One second. Get the uh, good old compressor turned on. I'm gonna need it. Ah, what the hell? We'll go hand tools for you guys. Yeah. The nice part about these ones with the T top is they did provide you a little bit more access to do your repairs. Man, 
I did love uh, uh, driving at night. You'd feel like you were on the uh, Tokyo Expressway and you know, with all the street lights cascading on your, on your hands too. And man, you felt like you were just hanging out in initial G there. It's just held down by uh, by four fourteens here. I'm sure a lot of you guys have messed with this more than once here. This is a it's a pretty common modification on these guys is to uh, do the uh, short throw shifter. I think that this one was a HK or something like that, but uh, or it could have just been uh, you know judging by the amount of eBay parts that were that was on this car when I got it. Uh, you know, just about everything on this car was was suspect, so we kind of went through and just did everything we could, really. Um, I think maybe the uh, second to original owner, he's done uh, tasteful mods, but I think most of those were either uh, uh, torn off or torn off and sold for more money to uh, do eBay stuff. So this guy should be nice and free now. Oh, got a little electrical connector hanging on here. Get that guy going. All right. One more on the other side. some grodies in there that might have even been for me because that's where I remember vacuuming some of this stuff out when I found the, uh, the good old warm colony in here there's some of my some of my wiring right there tried to keep it kind of factory looking here man that was a long time ago I think I even velcroed up the uh, good old blitz here Cool. All right, moving on to the dash. Tilt, 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 there we go. All right, let's see if we can get this door done just a little bit faster here. So we've already identified that these are both the uh, door harnesses right here with the ominous wire sticking out of it. Alright, <clears throat> two connectors unplugged here. Just gonna give them a little hand making their traverse back through here. You know, I think we're gonna take off the hood latch. That means we're gonna have to take off the hood today, too. Oh, wonderful. You know, these, uh, <clears throat> these situations, they always, they always get nasty on you. Oh, baby. Always in the uh, smallest of caverns. Uh, automotive yoga, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> okay, I'm just having a hard old time. Like I said, there's definitely some. Uh, Something added into this loom here. And it's not mine. I see my vacuum. 
vacuum hose coming in from the back there too. Not my best decision, but uh, got this nice long vacuum hose going up to my boost gauge. Manual boost gauge. I think we have a clear path now. Ugh. She feels like she's just about free to do what she wants. There we go. There's one check strap free. And uh, we're gonna jump around to the outside and pull the wiring harness through the door. And uh, that check strap is, she's not checking shit no more. Check it out. All right. Yeah, so where I love one of these little pit tools here. This one happens to have, uh, uh, you know, about a 90 degree and another 90 degree running off the opposite direction here. And they make great for Exposing these boots and not doing too, too much damage. Birth in a calf or something. Shouldn't say that. Probably a pretty gross birth, birth in a calf. Not as gross as I am though. No. This one's a uh, quite a bit more stubborn than the other side. And I thought that other side would come out pretty easily. This one's a little bit more dry rotted on this one. Here. Oh, it also has something taped up with it. Like I said, there's something else going on with this wiring loom on this side, or it's been it's been patched before too. These uh these MR2s, they're known for these wiring harnesses snapping at the door here. That's why I've been actually trying to save some of this stuff because uh it might really help somebody else out. I'm not gonna run any power to my my doors, being being race car life and all. I think we're still plugged into something on the inside. Yeah, I feel it's still. Yeah, they tapped into the power of this door for something. All right, we're gonna have to jump back inside. All right, still still here with my with my hand tools. Whoa, whoa. Oh yeah, wow, both those guys were pretty well on there. They like their doors. Oh yeah. Might have been the first time these guys have ever been broken free, actually. Check strap, we got the body harness or the door harness away from the body harness. I think we should be completely free when we release these door hinges here. So I'm making sure to just leave a couple a couple threads in most of these bolts here. Just so she doesn't fall on me. And I'm gonna run and grab a uh, little dolly so I can move it around. Yeah, these these doors were actually quite a bit heavier than I thought they were gonna be. I don't think the door on the Chevy and the C1500 weighs as much as these guys do. I can't believe that these ones don't have door hinge problems, but uh, I guess these ones do have door hinge. All right, 
right, we're just a few threads in there. We're gonna get a, uh, a little caster here so we can move her. Just like so. Put her full latch. Come all the way out with this front one. Now the only thing that's keeping this on is just my knee and the uh, rear striker and latch here. Fall on down. Not too bad, eh? Okay, that was record time taking off a MR2 door. Stay, Betsy. Okay. It's too mobile now. All right, we're just gonna move it along. Move it along. And let's see here, just a door coming through. Oh, this poor seat. This looks like she'd been chewed on by an alligator or maybe the uh, shark from one of the feature films that uh, talks about the size of his mouth. Um, yeah. This is Pulling out the uh, pulling out the seats and pulling off the doors here gave us a lot more room to work and uh, let's keep on attacking some stuff here. We've got a uh, little uh, screw here that's giving us some trouble. Ah, these drill bits just suck. Might even have to go a little bit smaller. Stepping down. And all right, here we are again. And I don't know if this was like the world's most hardened screw. What the hell's going on here? Uh, that's kind of hard getting a good angle on this guy. Oh man, I tore up the dash. I'm sorry guys. The, uh, some of the board is broken here on the back. Uh, some of it is overheated too. Uh, that's to be expected, but that's, uh, that's another MR2 cluster. It's gonna go over here with the, uh, I think that one was out of a, uh, out of a uh, ST185 uh, that I worked on a while back. They'll, they'll look good together. And I have a lot of stuff to clean up tonight. Alright, so ooh, the dash is out. Uh, not really sure if I did it correctly or not, but uh, we tore right through it. <coughs> no worries there. A um, few things I would have really liked to have shown you guys was how to remove the airbag and some other things like that, but I was just moving so fast and my, uh, my camera here was dying that we just kept on pushing through, really. Um, <clears throat> everything's going pretty, pretty darn well. We have to, uh, <clears throat> drop the, uh, steering column next, but we'll move around to the, uh, to the, uh, bottom side of it next, next episode. And, uh, drop the steering rack and maybe the, uh, sway bar end links. Um, I think we're going to leave the fuel tank in this one. I don't think we're going to be using the... OJ fuel tank and I think everything we need to get to as far as the brake lines everything like that is already uh, Already where we uh, can get to it without dropping the fuel tank. I hope at least 
Um, that can be that can be a pain in the ass too, is dropping the fuel tank on these things. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with our work today. We need to clean up a lot. <laughs> like I said, you'll you'll use every single tool when you work on these things all the way up until you get to the point where uh, where I am right here, where you start seeing some original, never been touched stuff. Really, um, I don't know. I don't know if we really need to uh, label any of these connectors too. It's pretty profoundly obvious which ones they are. And uh, most of this uh, wiring harness is just gonna get moved right over to the, uh, to the other chassis there. If the, uh, the body harness is actually in really good shape, it's only been spliced into just a little bit um, to make that other Gen 3 work. Uh, so I think that that's gonna work out in our favor. I don't know. We'll see what we're gonna do. I hope you guys join us for the next episode. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't know. Whatever you guys like to do these days. I'm gonna clean up some tools. Do you guys want to watch me clean up tools or should I just do it? I think I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna clean up. There's, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I used everything. I can't believe check straps on doors are what fooled me. <laughs> I've never been fooled by a check strap. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Anyways, uh, man, really happy you guys watch. Bye-bye. Here I am. Um, one thing I did want to show you guys while I had the uh, seat just kind of laying in here. Um... <clears throat> These uh, roll cages, when you put them in here, uh, they, they can really take a lot of living room out of these guys. Um, and uh, so me with a helmet on in this normal seat all the way back here, which I don't think we're gonna be, but all the way back here, um, you know, it's barely enough room for, for a helmet. And this is a seat with rails on it, and it's a stock seat, which, you know, is, is a lot higher than, than anything that we're gonna be putting in here by about like three inches too. But I mean, that is even still super close. I mean, super duper close. I think uh, I'd probably be one of the only people that would actually fit in this thing uh, safely <laughs> and still pass regulation. I don't know. Just something to think about, guys, before you guys go putting a uh, full cage and and things that uh, it can <clears throat> it can really uh, it can really go uh, a different way on you. All right.